Greetings, Jeep. And by Jeep, I'm using the pre-1940s US Army term. What's that, you ask? I've never heard of it myself. I did hear, however, that the term Jeep was in use previously since quite a long time back, and I did some quick searches. And while Wiki isn't always the most factual site, it did reference it from a book which explains it. And why does it matter? Not much, I suppose, other than as part of discussion whether it will be called a Jeep or something else in the game. Trademarks and all of that, legal exposure and what have you. But uh, Pickup Truck would be uh, working too, even if it's the official name, because we could then unofficially in- still call it a Jeep. And uh, we wouldn't be getting the fun pimps in any trouble. So we will be covering the Pickup Truck, also known as the Jeep in the 7 Days to Die Alpha 17 pre-talk series. Let's spend a minute listening to Mad Bull. So this is a concept drawing of the uh, off-road vehicle we're going to be working on. We've actually started modeling it, and it's going to go in the game since it's ready. Uh, pretty cool off-road vehicle. I don't know. It's going to have. We haven't really decided, you know, about upgrades and and, and mods yet, but we're actually uh, in some pretty deep designs right now for the um, legendary item and legendary weapon system. So it's going to have, we're going to allow mods on weapons and attachments, it sounds like, but, you know, the final verdict on that, we're still, I mean, we're going to have them. It's just deciding a few things about it. But anyway, um, whatever we kind of end up landing with on guns, we want to basically trans- use that same template for the, for the vehicles. So, you know, upgrades and mods will be a thing for vehicles as well. So without further ado, here we are. Now this car isn't rigged. It's just, it's your normal car that we've always had in the game. So we just packed it in. It doesn't have real suspension with moving parts and everything, but it serves a purpose for this. And it's great. It doesn't have a ton of sounds or nothing. It's just in there, but we've got drivable cars now, they're pretty cool. So the plan appears to be to have some sort of unified mod system, not just for guns, but something similar for the vehicles. I suppose it allows for a lot of different types of upgrades without them all being individual items and instead of having properties to allow variety in a large quantity of upgrades. It does sound pretty cool and hopefully it's something they implement in a, in a nice fashion. I also hope that this ends up being a real end game vehicle with, which has maintenance to upkeep it and where you need to buy or scavenge for a long time to get all the components to assemble the Jeep so that it's not nearly as accessible as the minibike is, which of course can be a bit troublesome if you don't find the correct book. But you want to make sure that really is an end game vehicle. Now his initial video here uses the already existing car, which gives uh, the general car concept, but uh, not much of a Jeep look. Fortunately for us, later videos included a lot more detail. So let's skip ahead to those. All right. We are back and we've got more zombies. We got a car. They take damage when they're hit. <laughs> See that fat guy getting stuck on my hood? Based on you know whether they fall on their top or their bottom or whatever, they pick the nearest animation and and then they uh, and then they realistically kind of interpolate back to that position and get back up. Looks pretty good. Back up. 
I just ran Steve over. <laughs> Sweet. So here, Manuel talks about using cars to show off the vehicle ragdoll system they're putting in. While it seems that the motorcycle will also have it, it looks a lot better on the car, I think. I did wonder initially if it would also cause damage as you drive over zombies, and uh, at part of this video you actually see him run over and kill Steve from it. And I think that's just awesome. Smeared zombie brains all over the pavement. Maybe this could be part of the upgrade path as well, with a better front with spikes or similar dealing more damage to zombies and objects and maybe having more durability to make it last longer before needing repairs to the front. Now let's finally have a look at the actual Jeep in the game, now that we've covered some of the new system and ragdolling. So here we are, this is the new Jeep. And uh, it's very well done in my opinion, I'm really happy. Um, with how this th things are coming out. We haven't really, uh, you know, it's not finished yet, but we're going to have smoke coming out of the smokestacks. We're probably going to have, uh, we're going to have um, particles coming out of the, off the tires and things like that. So it's, it's not 100% polished, but, you know, the, the basics are in and, uh, One thing that's cool is you can, uh, you can smash blocks with it. If I can find some. It's got, you can see that the yeah, there I broke one. You can see that the wheels have a... Independent suspension. So the wheels go up and down realistically as it interacts with the terrain. Which is really cool. I just took out that cactus. into this garage, see if I can do it. Get it lined up right here. The more speed you have, the more destructive force that you have. Oh man, this is not gonna happen. Can't get a good clean run. Sparks when you hit metal objects. Yeah, well, if you know, I should have set something up better. But essentially, if I could hit this full speed, I could have plowed right through it. We're still tuning a lot of this stuff, but it's kind of cool. Oh, I'm falling there. <laughs> and of course, what's immediately evident is that it really looks like a Jeep. Finally. Yucca fruit is not blocking movement, which is great news. Handling is a little bit weird though. It does uh, jump around a lot as it hits small items, even a cactus, but at least it's improved. It does appear to be destroying some blocks that it runs over or into them, but it is quite clunky actually. But you know, I guess it's just still early on as far as the physics and interacting with objects. It does give a good idea where this is going and what you could reasonably expect it to be doing when it's been completed. Manmol shows off some more vehicle improvements in the next video. All right, so let's take the Jeep for a cruise. Show you some of the improvements. It's, oh, yeah, that hurts when a Jeep lands on your head. <laughs> So he's improved the object collision, 
So you can pretty much smash through crap without slowing you down and a bunch of lag and all that kind of stuff. So Sean's been working hard on the the vehicles. I'm gonna try and run into this tree. Oh, oh. So right now I'm in free look mode. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna hit left mouse, and now it goes where I point the mouse. So it's I'm steering with the mouse now. <laughs> that was awesome. That's great. So as you guys can see, the uh, you know the the physics and the interaction with running stuff over is now pretty tight. Oh, run, do run! Still days from being smashed by a jeep. Oh, look at that! I got some air. That was cool. Don't hit that. <laughs> so I think we've improved the uh, explosion logic too now. So it used to smash into a car and it would leave a huge crater. I'm just running over these trash bags. They go poof. Once again, I'm still driving with the mouse. As you can see, the vehicle collision system is a lot smoother by far, and Manuel shows off the free look mode and mouse steering, which is something people have been asking for for, I think, quite a long time. Now, whether it's better or worse is debatable, but I guess longer distances, it might just be easier to use the mouse to steer, even though you might not have the fingertip control that you have by using the keys. It does appear to be easy to change between the modes, so I guess that's a big plus. It looks to be an awesome way to cruise with your friends, all together going for a loot run, and hopefully it comes with a big storage compartment so that you can save time and not be forced to go back to base to unload as often as we have to right now with the minibike. It would do away with a lot of the complaints tied to having a too small backpack for instance as well. Also noticeable in the video was the jeep running down a small tree at speed, even though a tall tree at low speed stopped him momentarily. At least it looked a lot more polished. Speaking of polished, there's more of this from Manmol. Now, Manmol isn't talking about the Jeep here, he's talking about the new terrain generation and uh, the tools, but the driving looks pretty slick. The vehicle seems to run very well and it's not being blocked by anything and everything like the minimikes in Alpha 16R. And hopefully if it destroys small things like cacti, offending zombies, woodlocks and so on, we could just be driving and enjoying ourselves instead of worrying about things bringing us to a total stop. The vehicle physics really have taken a big step forward, it's a lot smoother and it drives better. If you caught my previous vehicle videos, you've seen how this applies to the bicycle, minibike, motorcycle and the gyrocopter. It's coming together nicely. Now while I'm really happy to see the new vehicles, one item that really has to be improved is the client server syncing bugs which currently plague and in some cases cripple vehicle usage on especially multiplayer servers. If you've only played single player, you might not have run across this extensively, but what happens in multiplayer games is that as the player count on a server goes up, the risks of the minibike bugging out also increases. It was highlighted in previous comment that Manmol had mentioned fixing this in one of the videos, but I simply could not locate that reference. So if you have it, do link the video and timestamp for my reference please. But to give you an idea, there are two things that currently happen in 7 days to die for vehicles. Firstly, as you drive, the chunks load, and the game server and client periodically sync up your location, and this often causes you to walk backwards to prior point, and you continue from there. 
this rubber banding happens once in a while and it's not a big issue but it can be quite prevalent and happen every few seconds when it gets bad. Connected to this is the mini bike warping when you step off. What happens is that you drive, you step off the vehicle and when the client and server has synced it up, it looks weird, it rubber bands and it ends up somewhere nearby. This then brings us to the second main point and uh, they're probably partially connected in that somehow the server and client desyncs your location and your mini bike might end up in an impassable area such as a hillside or even stuck inside a trader's building. Or worse, the game decides you are actually driving through solid blocks letting you sink into the ground partially or fully. As you can see here, this is what happened, I got stuck and while exiting the vehicle is fine for the player, often you have to then dig out the mini bike, which becomes impossible if say it's at a trader area. At worst, you don't just get stuck, you fall through the world, that can be very nasty. Being bucks, I really do hope that they're fixed, as losing your bicycle is less of an issue, but your shiny motorcycle or jeep, that would be really more than just annoying. Still, if the new vehicle physics and terrain system fixes this properly, we'll finally be rid of one of the most annoying things happening in multiplayer games. So with this, we've covered all the vehicles that seem to be making it into Alpha 17. Hopefully, Alpha 18 gives us boats, and I wouldn't mind a train on tracks, but let's not get too ahead of ourselves. What do you think of the Jeep? As they polish it, what do you feel is critical for balance reasons, or features, or handling in general to make it a great addition and not merely a good addition to the game? Do like and subscribe, and why not share the video with your friends on social media as that's a big help to small channel as mine. Next up, we'll be covering some of the new POI work that they've been doing, which is set to further change how exploration occurs in 7 days to die. Until next time. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the vetted community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link below.